YouTubers to another Game of Thrones recap video. Okay, so I already put one out last night based off the insane season finale of season six. But you know what? I thought I would put out a proper one like I normally do just to give you kind of a top five, six, seven, whatever it may be on those best episodes so you can see kind of more of a breakdown of what's happening rather than me just basically being like an emotional puddle like that after everything that went on. So, yeah, we're going to go into a few of these different topics and see exactly what hey, happened in the episode and possible implications in the future. Alright, I'm going to do a top seven and we're going to start off the seven with Tom and Commit Suicide. Yes, okay, so there was another event that happened in the episode that started it all off and that made Tom and very sad. So Tom and Dear Sweet Tom took his crown off and decided to jump out the window. Much like denim style in the show The IT Crowd. He just hopped right out the window when he saw some trouble and ended it. And somebody wrote in the comments of one of my videos, one of the funniest comments possible, he said, I think Tommen took the name King's Landing a little too literally, if you know what I mean. Anyway, yeah, so with Tommen dead, that means there has to be a new ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. Hmm, wonder who that's going to be. It's going to be further down my list. He never had good guidance. I mean, he had Cersei. I mean, Tywin was there, but Tywin died very early, so he's pulled all over the place. And he had a taste of Marjorie, and that made his head all screwed up. So, anyway, Tom commits suicide, big problem in the Seven Kingdoms. Number six on my list, a lot of people probably think should be higher, is Arya shows up to Westeros and kills Walder Frey. In addition, they throw in a nice Frey Pie moment there for everyone. Because there's a lot of book readers that are like, man, where Frey Pie is going to happen? Uh, then eventually everyone just kind of went like, yeah, it's probably not going to happen because it was a little while back and also it had something to do with the Mandalays, which hadn't really been on the show for the most part. So they didn't think it was going to happen, but you know what? They totally do it anyway. We had Arya plays this girl who was sitting at the banquet with the Freys and the Lannisters. And this is a girl that just keeps staring at Jamie. and Braun and Jamie talk about it a little bit, but it looks like, you know, they thought that she was going to be like wanting to do Jamie. Now in the end, it was Arya the whole time, most likely, because she took a face from the Hall of Faces in the House of Black and White, and she was just eyeing down the Kingslayer, essentially. Finally, when the whole banquet is done and Jamie is pissed off to go down to the King's Landing, she serves some pie to Lord Walter Frey, and guess what? It has a finger in it, and it's his son that's inside of it, in addition to two others. So, Arya pulls the mask off and then slits Walter Frey's throat, but not before she tells Walter that uh, you are going to look at, at me, a Stark, the last thing you ever see. And then BAM! Dead. Huge cool moment. The number five moment of the episode, what I was referencing before with the Tommen moment is, after, with the death of Tommen, there has to be a new ruler in King's Landing, and that ruler ends up being his mother, Cersei Lannister. Now, seeing her just walk toward the Iron Throne with all the crowd around her, just dead silent. The only person who seems excited one bit is in fact Kyburn, who hands her her new really ridiculous type of crown in my opinion. It was very, it seemed very Disney-like in a weird way, like I thought there's Maleficent right there walking up to the Iron Throne. And she's just, like I said before, she makes all the worst plans, like they never work out exactly how she wants it to, so her being the actual ruler of Westeros is insane. Not that it really matters because of another moment down our list, but for right now, she is the ruler and I'm sure she's going to do a terrible, terrible job. But we have a main villain in King's Landing that people are gunning for. Number four moment of the episode, we have Jon Snow being named the King of the North! Oh my god, all the feels hit me on that one. Like, I know it wasn't a great scene necessarily as far as like no action happened or anything, but the moment when Lady Mormont stood up among all these great Northern Lords and Lords of the Vale and the Wildlings, and she's just like, House Glover, did you answer the call of the Starks when they needed you? How about you, Manderlees? Did you? No. We stuck to it because we stick to our oaths. What are you going to do about it now? And then they get up and they go, You're right, maybe we should stick to our oaths and we are going to swear our swords to John, the White Wolf, the King of the North. And that was just an amazing moment. I don't even think John wanted to be King of the North, but you know what? It was thrust upon him. So he is absolutely going to take it. And, I, you know, it's just great to see. Now, 
Daenerys at one point was talking about she's going to need to marry somebody. It would be interesting if it were John, although there's another moment down my list that makes it a little funky if they were to marry. The number three moment, speaking of, is Daenerys Targaryen, along with her massive army, is riding towards Westeros mercilessly on a ton of ships. Okay, so we know what Daenerys' army has been. She beat the slave masters in Slaver's Bay, or now Dragon Bay as she's calling it. And she first had to dump Dario Naharis because she's like, I can't take you with me because, you know, you're my side job. Like, it just, it doesn't look good, okay? So, she dumps Dario, doesn't really care about it all that much. Dario takes it like a champ. Uh, we'll probably see him again in the future at some point. But they uh, end up traveling over the seas to Westeros with her Dothraki, with her Unsullied, with the ship she got from the Masters, and also from the Greyjoys, Yara and Theon. But, thanks to a scene earlier in the episode as a result of a big moment, we have Elena Tyrell meets with the Dornish to talk about revenge on the Lannisters. And who pops up? Lord Varys, one of Daenerys' right-hand men. And because of that alliance, in this scene where she's going over to Westeros, guess what? She has a new fleet of ships. If you notice in the sails, she also has Dornish ships and Tyrell ships along with her other ones to make sure that when she comes to Westeros, she is going to rule and she is going to rule very quickly. So the Lannisters will be out of there really quickly. Just really cool to see all those to come together with Daenerys and Tyrion, the new Hand of the Queen, about to take over Westeros and bump Cersei out. Number two moment of the episode, we have R plus L equals J, CONFIRM! <laughs> I think everybody knew it was coming at some point, like it's just logical that his parents were Rhaegar and Lyanna, but it was just so breathtaking to finally see it go down. I mean, we did see in, like, in the cast list that uh, the young Ned Sark was probably going to be in this episode, so when you saw Benjen drop Bran off and Benjen's like, I gotta, I gotta go fight the White Walkers and stuff. Um, and then Bran sees that weirwood. Ooh, I was like, okay, Tower of Joy, I think we're going back. And you finally see Ned run up the stairs, his daughter, his sister, Lyanna. And uh, she did the great, promise me, Ned, take care of him. Robert will kill him. You know he will. And then you see the little baby close up on his face and then BAM! Jon Snow's face confirmed that he is the product of Targaryen and Stark baby making. And it was just great because that, just to throw it out there, for the, the uh, passing of the throne, that puts John like second in line at this point because he is also a Targaryen now, and which is also why it's a little funky that he should marry Daenerys, but Targaryens get down like that, so maybe it's not all that weird, but because in this scenario, Daenerys would be the aunt of Jon Snow because Rhaegar was Daenerys' brother, and he's the product of Rhaegar, so he's like one below on the tree. So, yeah, a little funky, but he does have a claim to the Iron Throne, and he is legitimate, can be Lord of Winterfell, and King of Westeros. And the final moment of the episode, which was the start of the episode, is we have the Mad Queen, Cersei Lannister, burns down the Scepter Baelor using wildfire from beneath the Scepter Baelor that Mad King had down there, which was insane. She didn't just kill, like, the High Sparrow and his sparrows, she killed, like, everybody. First she had Kyburn lure Maester Pycelle down to the, like, to the lower layer to Kyburn's uh, laboratory or whatever it was. And then all these little kids with knives stabbed him to death. Perfect! Then you had Cersei not show up for her trial after Lars got done confessing to all his sins and joined like the Seven and gave up all his titles and everything. Which didn't end up mattering anyway because the whole Sept burnt down despite Marjorie trying to tell the High Sparrow we need to get out because Cersei planned something clearly because she's not here right now. Then all of a sudden you had Lancel climbing because he got stabbed by a little kid too. He's like army crawling down on the dirt trying to get this candle that is in the middle of some wildfire on the floor that is about to burn out. If he doesn't catch it, they're all going to die. How great is it that Lancel ends up being the one that has to get rid of the candle? considering that's one of the people that did Cersei in incredibly. In fact, probably the person that did Cersei in. So, it was great that he was the one that kind of let everyone down and is the ultimate reason why I guess everyone exploded. But, I'm just so sad about it because I always like Loras, even though he was a total chump on the show. Marjorie, gotta love Marjorie. Uh, you have Mace Tyrell die, you have Kevin Lannister die, you have the High Sparrow die, you have Lancel die. Um, my god, there's just so many people that went down in addition to Pycelle. But, 
Someone who did not die in that whole thing was a Septa, uh, I believe her name is Unella. Yeah, she was taken and she was strapped down and she's going to be tortured for a little while it looks like by Cersei. Of course Cersei pours some wine on her, says shame, all that kind of stuff, and she confesses all kinds of crazy things. At the end of that whole like little diatribe between her and uh, the Septa, she has the mountain come in, Gregor Clegane, and say, this is your god now. And I'm really kind of confused what that means, which by the way, we confirm that he has a head on the show, whereas in the books it's not like clear that he has a head at all, or it's Rob Stark's head. Really weird. Anywho, uh, I don't know if that means like Cersei's going to have the mountain like rape her constantly or something, but uh, she's going to be tortured for quite a while. But just to get back to it, the Scepter Baylor, when it exploded, you see Cersei's face with happiness, and then she takes a sip of wine. She's just so happy that she accomplished that and every one of them is dead. Because she's at the mad tipping point. And she tried to save her son Tom and she tried. She sent the mountain to his chamber to make sure that he wouldn't be in the Scepter Baylor. But you know what? Didn't matter anyway because Tom ended up jumping outside of a window because he knows that every one of those people was dead. So the only thing left in his life was his mother who was a spiteful woman and the mountain basically. Oh, what an episode! Oh my gosh, she was so good. And uh, I'm sorry for some of like the discombobulated videos from last night, but I had to share them with all of you because I just thought they were s it was such a good episode. Now that Game of Thrones is over, I'm still going to have a few more Game of Thrones videos this week. Like, no worries about that. I'm going to do kind of a recap of the season, almost like, kind of like an Oscar Awards type thing, like best character of the season, breakout character, stuff like that, and uh, I want you to check out some of those. Also, during the summer I already talked about another video, I'm going to do my death matches again, I'm also going to do what if videos, and I'm going to have some other videos uh, coming up with as well as it relates to Game of Thrones, and I'm going to be focusing more on some other shows like some of the Marvel, like Netflix shows, and also The Walking Dead. Of course, check out some of my other videos. You can watch this one right here. This was my reaction right after the episode ended where I just couldn't handle life at that moment. And I apologize, it's a little uh, but I, apparently it's entertaining, all right? But that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Hope you take care. Goodbye.